massive tree <gasps> is cracked in half and on all these power lines over here and then went onto our house. That's what it sounded house. like Sunday when Sarah Kula showed off the backyard of her midtown Toronto house. A day earlier, during the powerful thunderstorm that swept across southern Ontario and Quebec, a large maple tree fell over and part hit the roof of her house and knocked her chimney into her neighbor's yard, leaving a gaping hole. Now Toronto Hydro says it could be another three days before crews can come and remove the tree from the power lines to the house that Kula and her partner just moved into a week earlier. Luckily, they weren't injured, but at last count, reports say the storm left 10 people dead and impacted 15 million Canadians as it cut power to a million homes and saw wind gusts of 120 kilometres an hour in Toronto and Ottawa. As the holiday weekend ends, officials in Ottawa called the damage worse than during the tornadoes that hit in 2018 and worse than the ice storm of 1998. For sure, the crews, you can see the crews everywhere. They're around the clock uh... Uh, major intersections with no traffic signals, which is really bad getting around. I suspect by Tuesday it'll be improved, but I suspect it's going to take them a good week, I would think, to really get things going in the right direction. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, May the 24th, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. I was driving up Bathurst Street in Thornhill when Saturday's storm hit. Luckily, I'd seen the emergency alert from Environment Canada because my friends and I had planned to take a hike in Earl Bales Park, but instead we cancelled. I stayed in my car and just in time too, because when the 100 kilometer an hour winds hit the intersection around 1 o'clock, it was hard to hold on to my car because it was rocking. And part of the roof of a condo that was under construction flew off and fell onto the road in the opposite lane beside me. And a grocery store cart went flying. And while I know, look, my story is minor compared to what other people have been experiencing, and you'll meet some of them in today's episode, it was really scary. Really, like something out of a movie. Branches broke off trees, election signs blew down, fences went flying, and power was out at my house too. But it's all back now, and we're fine, and not to worry. Coming up, you'll hear from Toronto homeowners and from Ottawa, where the storm caused significant damage, including at the historic Jewish cemetery on Bank Street. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm John Diener in Ottawa, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. Despite the storm damage, plans are still on for the gala celebration this coming weekend to honour the 100th birthday of cantor Moshe Kraus of Ottawa and his wife Rivka. The synagogue Ohev Yisrael is throwing a virtual party for the couple for their contribution to Jewish life all over the world. Krauss's beautiful voice saved him from death at Bergen-Belsen. He was a child prodigy singer, and he lost most of his family in the Holocaust. The notorious camp commandant, Joseph Kramer, took a liking to Krauss's voice, so he fed him, and he made him come home with him every Sunday and sing. Krauss has also been a prolific Holocaust speaker at schools and memorial events. The gala is on Sunday, May 29th, and we put a link to the event in our show notes. If you want to register, it's free. And now, this important message. From award-winning journalist Marsha Lederman comes Kiss the Red Stairs, a compelling memoir of Holocaust survival, intergenerational trauma, divorce, and discovery that will guide readers through several lifetimes of monumental change. Marsha was five when a simple question led to a horrifying answer. She asked her mother why she didn't have any grandparents. Her mother told her the truth. The Holocaust. Decades later, her parents dead and herself a mother to a young son, Marsha begins to wonder how much history has shaped her own life. Reeling in the wake of a divorce, she craves her parents' help. But in their absence, she is gripped by a need to understand the trauma they suffered and she begins her own journey into the past to tell her family stories of loss and resilience. Kiss the Red Stairs, available now wherever books are sold. And joining me now are Sarah Kula and Matthew Mendelssohn from Toronto. So tell us from the beginning, like, where were you? What happened? Sure, we had a wonderful day. Uh, we're in the Bathurst and St. Clair neighborhood, and it was nice and sunny. We went on a walk to the farmer's market in the morning. And then I went by myself on a walk to the bank. I was in Cedar Vale Ravine when I got a notification of a severe storm coming in. So I quickly took shelter at an aroma during the time. And then I get a phone call from Matt over here saying a huge tree just fell in our house. And he was kind of almost laughing about it. Like, and I thought he was joking. <laughs> 
Um, but then we came home to see a huge tree uh, on top of our house, on top of our backyard. Um, and at this point, we just moved into our house this this week. So we're this is our first week in our house. Um, and we got to meet our neighbors. Turns out the chimney of our house got knocked off and went into the neighbor's backyard, caused some damages. And another neighbor had the tree fall on their, um, their rooftop as well. So possibly damages there. Um, but luckily no one was hurt. Of course, if the chimney had fallen on a person, that would have been much more severe. So Matt, you were actually in the house when this happened or you were, where were you? No, uh, I was uh, switching out light switches in the basement and then I saw the lights flicker. What did it sound like when this happened? Can you remember? I was just a, a loud thud, I guess. I didn't really know what it was. And then I went to go look outside and I saw a massive tree sitting there and then called Sarah. <laughs> So what about the, uh, the, it was raining and everything. Did water get in? What What's happening with that? Uh, we haven't seen any water yet. We're looking at it, but I guess we have a, potentially a hole in our roof now because the chimney's missing. I Ubered home from Aroma and immediately we started calling and, you know, 311, the, the number was not even picking up at all. Um, Toronto Hydro, starting at one o'clock, we were calling them and calling them both on both of our phones and after about an hour on hold, the call would drop. So we call again. And we called consecutively for 12 hours and without anyone picking up. And finally at 1 a.m., we were able to reach an agent. Um, so now at least the issue has been reported. Uh, the tree fell on a bunch of power lines. So that's like the reason why we need Toronto Hydro. Um, eventually, we were able to talk to someone from 311 as well. But they said they can't do anything because of the power lines. So yeah, but are you allowed to stay in your home because it's like uh, loose power? What's what's the what did they tell you? What did what did they tell you? <laughs> I went to bed. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really say anything. Do you, do you feel safe to stay there? Like you have lights and heat and power and whatever. Yeah, everything's still working. Everything's still working for the time being. We don't know how much longer the power lines are going to be able to support the tree. Oh, so, so it's, it's not on the house, or it is, but part of it. Like, well, you'll show us, but yeah, it's on the house and the lines at the same time. Oh, my God. So, you know, you're supposed to carry her over the threshold, right? And to a new home. And then you're starting to unpack boxes. So then this happens. How are you absorbing this as you're starting your, you know, cohabitating life together? Um, it's for honestly, we've had a series of bad luck incidents over the last two months. So this is just an icing on top of everything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if anything, we learned that we're pretty resilient together, um, but we are hoping that we get some good news <laughs> coming soon. Um, our, the Israeli neighbors we met, they actually told us that this is a sign of good luck. Um, so I guess that's how we're going to choose to take it. <laughs> and now let's bring in Brent Taylor, the co-chair of the Jewish Memorial Gardens in Ottawa. He spoke to me just after he paid a visit to the site. Brent, tell us uh, the extent of the damage. What did you see? Yes, I, I spent the afternoon there assessing the damage from yesterday's storm, which was quite significant. Uh, we, we, there's, there's trees at the cemetery that are 100 years old, some, some older, some younger. And unfortunately, the storm caused tremendous uh, trees toppled all over on on our recently renovated uh, front gates and fence, and many, many tombstones t toppled over, unfortunately. Do you have numbers? Like, did you count how many? Well, we're, we're, we're still in that process of assessing it. Um, I would say it's dozens, not hundreds, thank God, but it's dozens and it's, it's a significant uh, damage. Just to remove some of the trees is quite an extensive, extensive job. Did the storm interrupt any uh, funeral plans that did you know of for Sunday, Monday? We know there's uh, no. And as a matter of fact, uh, today there was a there was a burial today. Yeah, but it was it was a um, you know it wasn't a big crowd. And as a matter of fact, as a result of my walkthrough today, we decided that we're we're closing the cemetery at least for a few days until further notice because we feel it's it's somewhat of a we we want to. We're aware of everyone's safety and we don't want anyone tripping or there could be some trees that that toppled that some are not toppled and we don't know if they might still come down. Tell me um, if you can, where exactly most of the damage is or is it sort of all over the place? What do Good you know? question. Most of the damage is in section sections one, two and three, which are the oldest, the, the oldest sections of the cemetery, starting at the south end of Bank Street. 
that's what the cemetery, the first people were buried uh, in 1892 in section one. And, and that's where the most, that's where the oldest trees are. And that's where the most damage is. I saw the pictures you told you sent to me there. They're shocking. They're so upsetting. But one of the graves has the name Bilski, which is a founder of Ottawa's Jewish community. Who's in there and what happened with what's what's that grave? So that that had a tree toppled right on right on top of the grave. Uh, fortunately, it, it looks like, hope, you know, one of the concerns is removing trees is not an easy process. So you don't know what other damage occurs once once they go to remove the, the trees, they have to cut the trees. In, in many pieces to remove it. How personally upsetting is this when you saw this? No, it was it was shocking. It's shocking. I've never seen anything like it. You know, ho- hopefully we'll get it cleaned up as soon as we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else do you know? Like personally, how where were you when the the storm hit? And you guys were okay though. Uh, we were. Yeah, we were. We were in our home. Uh, we it came. The storm came on very suddenly. Uh, about five minutes before the storm came on, there was that warning on our phone. Uh, we didn't literally think, thank God, honestly, thank God. Yeah. Because that's a great thing. Lives, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But then the storm came all of a sudden and you looked out the window, you couldn't see anything. The kind of damage that occurred is, is like you see in a hurricane or a tornado. If you look at some of the pictures I sent and I didn't, I'll send you more if you want, but I sent you the sort of the highlight ones where you could see the huge uprooting of trees, really, you know, just like a tornado. <laughs> And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Joel Barmish in Montreal. And we'll end the show with a sneak peek at an upcoming interview with the Jewish butcher from Ottawa, who was chosen to show Prince Charles and Camilla around on their royal tour last week. Well, they were just very friendly. They seemed down to earth. Um, you know, he, he thought the, the whole incident with, with displaying his product was very funny and very clever. Those were his words. Um, they were just very warm. My, my son was at the stand with me and he was there with his 10 month old son. And when Camilla came by, she shook, she shook the hand of the baby and, uh, you know, not that he's going to remember anything, but it was, uh, it was just a very nice, warm few minutes. It was, it was fun. This episode has been brought to you by Looking Back, Moving Forward, 160 Years of Jewish Life in BC. Published by the Jewish Museum and Archives of British Columbia for their 50th anniversary, this elegant volume is a once-in-a-generation collection of Jewish life and history throughout the province. Order your copy today at jewishmuseum.ca.